Every time I think I'm not going to have some topic to discuss, the LibGDX community always delivers. In this case, our resident owl friend Lies put together an excellent lib called GDX Flexbox. This is a new Scene2D widget that gives you a layout alternative to table. But what is a Flexbox? Well, if you come from the world of web dev, this is not an unfamiliar term. Flexbox was developed as a solution for website layouts to allow for content to flow based on the size of the viewport. In the early days of HTML, you had a pretty good idea of what screen size users had, and you would make static content that looked best at that resolution. But as technology advanced and smartphones became a thing, you couldn't depend on knowing what weird aspect ratios and DPIs your site was going to be seen on a user device. The solution is Flexbox. It lets its elements flow naturally in either a row or a column. Those children can be of a fixed size or a percentage of the available space with elements wrapping to the next line if they spill over. This adapts the layout to any size of window or view. In truth, the real contribution of Flexbox is that it effectively killed the how do you center a div meme. Flexbox is not just for websites, however. Enter Yoga Layout. Developed by Facebook, this open source Flexbox implementation is designed to work on all platforms, bringing some much needed uniformity across websites, mobile apps, and desktop applications. It's entirely compliant with the Flexbox specification with some extra features sprinkled in. Thanks, Zuck! Toasty! It was ported to Java by Nick AC as Meditate Layout, and finally to LibGDX by Lies and Yours Truly. Why would you want to use it in LibGDX specifically? You can technically emulate the same layouts with table, horizontal group, and related widgets. Some people just don't like table. Maybe they're more familiar with Flexbox from their designer backgrounds. Even though I'm a Scene2D table layout purist, I can still see the value of using Flexbox. The code is just so clean. And it doesn't hurt that the Flexbox spec is incredibly well tested and documented. And there are some techniques you just simply can't do in a table without incredible difficulty. On that note, you should read the documentation on Yoga Layout, or basically take any good tutorial on Flexbox. There are tons out there. Before you get into coding with LibGDX though, you should experiment in the Yoga Playground. This is a great tool to learn by doing instead of just reading passively. See, with the root element selected, I can add new nodes and change what direction they flow in. Wrapping works too. Alignment. You can apply these controls to the children of these nodes too, allowing you to make very advanced designs. You can test what you've learned by going to flexboxgame.com and going through each example. The terminology is roughly the same. What is important is learning what each control does. Actually, some of these examples are completely impractical, but whatever. If you can beat this, you really know all there is to know. Now add GDX Flexbox to your LibGDX project per the instructions on the GitHub page. The first example listed here is not really relevant to a GDX programmer. This is only useful for a general Java application. The next example for Scene2D is what we want. You create a Flexbox here. This is a normal widget that you'll add to your stage. And since we're adding directly to the stage, we can set fill parent to true. Okay, now this is where you start setting the properties of the Flexbox. You get the root element, then you call the setter for whatever you want to modify first. Let's change our flex direction. This determines the direction that the children are laid out. The default is row. We can change it to a column. We can also list the elements in reverse. Row reverse, column reverse. Let's change another property. Instead of calling flexbox.getRoot again, we can just go down to a new line and chain together another setter. This sort of builder style makes the code a lot easier to read and reduces verbosity. This time let's set the wrap. I want my rows to start from the top and wrap downwards. So I'll select wrap instead of wrap reverse. Now it's ready for us to add widgets. We're going to do some basic labels with centered text in this example 
but you can add any sort of Scene2D widget. Call flexbox.add and pass in the label. It's that easy. Presumably you want to modify the properties of the node that you just created. Add actually returns a yoga node that you can capture and modify. I prefer using the builder style. Again, it's cleaner and it's simpler. If the width and height are going to be the same, you can simplify this further with the set size method. This might look better with some backgrounds. You can set the background of the root node like this. Note that the padding specified in the drawable you select changes the padding of the node. You can also set the backgrounds of your children nodes too. This is a vast improvement over table layout because you can't do this without adding a bunch of containers to your table. See more examples in the Flexbox Tests directory. You actually shouldn't use Flexbox for everything. Use it where it makes sense. Even the web devs will tell you that. Sometimes you'll want to use a table and use Flexbox inside a single cell. Think of it as a more powerful horizontal or vertical group. Now it's time for challenge mode. Here I'm going to give you a sample image of a user interface and it's your job to use Flexbox to match its layout. The labeled resources are available in the skin.json linked in the description. This is a comic book style of layout. Perhaps you can use this technique for some dynamic storytelling. Each element can align itself. Your design does not have to be uniform. Now try that with a table. Or better yet, don't. Check out how I use percentage for the heights and an aspect ratio. If you use the same ratio when you draw your image at a high resolution, it will look good no matter what size the view is. This is a sort of menu for a game. Go ahead and pause the video to try it out. Very good. The root has a column flex direction. The logo area is set to grow equals one. The top menu uses nested nodes to achieve this row layout going across. I added margins and padding where I saw fit. The buttons are set to height 0 so that the node is forced to be the min height defined by the actor. I made the image rotate for a little pizzazz. This menu is the sort of thing that Flexbox was made for. Now this is a good, better, best kind of menu. Maybe you can implement your bullshit in-app purchases this way. Outstanding. See how you have to nest your children to achieve these effects? The rest of the layout is achieved with justification, alignment, and careful use of margins or padding. I do hope you find yourself a whale so you could finally afford to feed yourself. Well, that's it. Flexbox is going to revolutionize how you do UI. And by revolutionize, I mean marginally make it better. But every little bit counts, right? Anyway, keep the skies clear, amigos. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.